Okay. Right. So the final part here is about threats to data transmission and device security. All right. So now here we will talk about the the communication. Okay. The communication between uh, when somebody sends something to somewhere. Okay. Um, so the title of this is interception of user communication. Um, I think everyone knows NSA, uh, National Security Agency. Um, I think uh, everyone knows about this pr this uh, person called Ed uh, Edward Snowden. <laughs> so he's the one that actually revealed the to us that uh, the U.S. Uh, government, uh, especially this uh, agency called the NSA, listens to even t encrypted communication between uh, Google, including Gmail and Yahoo users uh, on the cloud. Okay, this is really uh, interesting, frightening as well. Um, so most of the public internet users like us, okay, so we actually use services like Google or maybe Yahoo and then uh, uh, even educated user like us, okay, we will always check for the log, you know, from the web pages. We need to make sure that we are connected secure website before we log in our username and password and then we, we enable the uh, two factors authentication from Google, you know, uh, through PIN or maybe through authentication apps and things like that. So we, we thought that this communication path is all, you know, always secure and whatever we send over here is actually very, very secure. But um, this part, <laughs> the NSA exploited the encryption decryption flaws of the Google front end server and to circumvent the uh, server and directly listen to the back end in plain text data. Okay, so they actually uh, are able, the NSA are able to intercept this communication between the uh, from front end server to the back end Google uh, server that stores the, our actual data and they're able to listen in a, in a plain text uh, format. So which means uh, the NSA agency, they should be able to, uh, to read all the communication traffic of all the users that uses Google or maybe Yahoo, okay? It could be more. <laughs> okay, next, another example, uh, Tumblr, user information breach, okay? So I think uh, uh, maybe some of us are use using one of the, uh, the this service called the Tumblr. Uh, and for Tumblr is actually, um, uh, it's, a, it's a micro uh, blogging kind of a, a, a portal uh, so um, something like um, yeah it's like a mini uh, micro blogging it's not a full blogging but a micro blogging uh, more than half of the accounts and password of the micro micro blogging website tumblr were stolen by hackers okay Hackers invaded, uh, invaded the uh, Tumblr server in a certain way and stole the information of Tumblr's users. Tumblr stated that the breach would not cause damages to users because the database information was encrypted. Okay. However, th the fact shows that the user information was encrypted using a weak algorithm so that means the the algorithm can be easily being cracked maybe after a couple of hours or maybe a couple of a couple of days and after obtaining the encrypted user information the hackers were able to quickly crack a large amount of user information uh, now why is this uh, important All right now because uh, sometimes a lot of users uh, will be quite surprised where they use one password for pretty much all their social networking website, right? And uh, so if, if one of the website has been compromised, so the, um, the attacker or the cracker or the hacker, they can use this uh, password and try to gain access to your other website. And uh, so therefore, um, t the way we, pr we can protect ourselves is uh, if the website offers secondary 
uh, authentication factor, we should actually use the secondary authentication factor. So even though uh, the attacker uh, gets our username and password and they try to access, which you know, and the uh, attacker will be receiving what is your secondary uh, password, for example, SMS, which is a bit hard for them to to obtain. Okay, so. Um, yeah, why are information breached so frequently? Okay, now because of <laughs> uh, user like us, we like to contribute to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to the social networking. Okay, and uh, uh, we we like to um, post our personal uh, favorite thing, like what's your favorite car, what's your favorite pet, um, your favorite color, and things like that. So because sometimes when those uh, uh, you know when we try to recover our password recover password lost password sometimes we forgotten and uh, some of the website will ask us what is your your favorite color for example you know and uh, some of the information can be uh, reviewed by looking at your social media website okay um, threats in the communication process um, what security risk uh, will occur during the communication um, so there are a lot of possibilities when when a machine sends something to over the internet to a server. Um, okay, transmission risk. Okay, we could potentially um, uh, being a victim of MITM attack. Now, if you still remember, this acronym stands for man in the middle attack. So we could potentially be one of the uh, victim all right so for example if if somebody were to join an anonymous you know wi-fi router in the public space like mcdonald's starbucks okay i'm not to say mcdonald's is not safe but potentially you know mcdonald's starbucks uh, K kfc's or whatever free wi-fi whatever coffee cafe uh, that provides free wi-fi you could potentially easily fell into their trap by joining their web uh, the router, the free Wi-Fi, and then they could be in the man in the middle attack, okay? <coughs> and also data transmission, which are not encrypted, or maybe you're using an inadequate uh, encryption uh, algorithm. It's also not recommended, okay? Because uh, if it's a weak encryption uh, algorithm, for example, uh, if you say it, um, uh, I join free Wi-Fi, but I also form uh, a VPN connection back to my office. But the VPN technology I'm using was the very first technology, like for example, uh, PPTP. <laughs> right. So even though you have a VPN, but with a very weak uh, uh, v VPN, this is like a first generation of VPN, uh, and this could be easily being a crack. Okay. Um, so this is um, very weak. Um, and what about device security risk? Okay, so sometimes it could be server with a vulnerability. Uh, uh, like I said earlier, you know, the attacker could could probably crack into your server uh, or maybe some other server, and uh, they they can actually intercept your traffic communication. Uh, user using weak password. Okay, yeah, this is the worst. Okay. Even though you have a server, uh, you're supposed to log in before you read information. But user uses very weak password. They use they use their uh, birth date. They use the car number plate as their password. So again, all this information can be easily uh, being searched through the uh, online uh, social media, right? Uh, user identity are not authenticated. Uh, this is even worse. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, some server they don't even uh, lock uh, uh, audit or maybe lock down create a log information about who access uh, who what information at what time so that could be a, a potential uh, risk okay all right so man in the middle attack M -I -M -I -T -M. this is a type of indirect intrusion attack so in a man in the middle attack an attacker uses a variety of technical means to virtually place a controlled computer between two computers in the network. This controlled computer is called man in the middle. Man in the middle. Um, so 
so what how this happened it, it could be um, so man in the middle attack uh, one of the ways to, to perform man in the middle attack is by by performing what we call the ARP okay uh, earlier in the previous slide I showed you one of the method which is to create a fake or we call it the rook uh, access point the wireless access point so that people will join to your network join to your Wi-Fi and from there you can be a man in the middle or maybe we can uh, use the uh, ARP uh, spoofing okay now earlier section we also spoke about IP spoofing so now we talk about ARP spoofing so one this is one of the method uh, ARP spoofing basically means that man in the middle attack will actually send an ARP reply not request reply telling user B that hey I'm the MAC address of a IP address okay so at the same time man in the middle attack will also tell A that hey I'm, I'm sending you the ARP reply saying that I'm the I'm the MAC address this this MAC address of the B's IP address so user A will think that if I want to communicate with uh, B's IP address okay then I will actually send to this MAC address which is this guy and then in return this guy will send the whatever your request to this guy so the whole transaction will happen uh, actually between you know in in the man in the middle so what is the consequences consequences is information tampering so man in the middle attack they could potentially alter your information before uh, a and b sees the the information right it could be email it could be it could be a website, it could be anything. Um, information theft, okay? Yeah, so stealing information, uh, reading the, the content and everything, you know, that is the potential, the risk. Information not encrypted or inadequate encryption, yeah? So as well, I mentioned before, uh, inadequate encrypted, it could be example like the, uh, you, you probably use the weakest encryption algorithm the lowest bits you know if information is not encrypted information security may be compromised however even if the data is encrypted information be also can be stolen or can be cracked okay I just mentioned the uh, weak um, so threat prevention suggestion encrypt your information before storage okay um, so it could be a couple of ways uh, I think uh, everyone knows like we can also compress our file using zip right and usually when we zip something we don't perform um, a password on top of the zip alright so now you could actually add on like password and your zip uh, your, your password uh, algorithm you could use the highest bit possible the more the, the merrier the more bits to encrypt your, your your file or the password even better um, and another way of encrypting your stuff is uh, hard disk encryption you could encrypt your entire hard disk so anything that you store in your hard disk it will be encrypted without uh, a proper login process a proper username and a password to, to your win to your to your machine and uh, all this information cannot be cannot be read. Uh, for example, if somebody stolen your laptop, they they wouldn't know your username password. Even though they have your hard disk, they also cannot read whatever is, is in the hard disk, even with external computers. Um, and uh, encrypt information before transmission, right? And uh, I think uh, the easiest way is to form a VPN. Uh, to a secure server which is a trusted server example like your office server and uh, uses encrypt a strong encryption algorithm okay now PPTP is a no-no okay <laughs> uh, it's a very old legacy uh, VPN uh, technology and uh, today uh, after that we have the L2TP uh, L2TP IPsec and also the uh, Microsoft introduced uh, SSTP a couple years ago uh, so all these are actually uh, much more secure than the PPTP so avoid PPTP alright authentication attack okay 
uh, authentication attack is a uh, attacker obtain a user identity authentication information by certain means okay and uses the identity information to steal sensitive information or carry out illegal activities or acts is a very common form of attack okay uh, as I mentioned before phishing is a very uh, uh, effective strategy to obtain a user's uh, credential phishing okay remember the phishing um, so always install uh, to, to prevent always install a genuine antivirus software right those are, are more well known antivirus software and don't simply just install any uh, antivirus which claim they can do everything but they are new and they are not known in the market they are, they are not even ev uh, evaluated by any reviewer and use strong password okay I think everyone knows about this uh, don't use just uh, alpha numeric uh, ABC and one two three uh, try to combine with uh, some weird um, symbol you know like hash uh, alias symbol dollar sign percentage whatever you know to, together with uh, capital letter words small letter words and etc etc and reduce the relevance between different password all right um, so try not to repeat your password the same password from a different uh, uh, use of the application or maybe different use of the website or and try not to repeat your password too often when the whenever there's a password prompt you to to refresh and uh, to change a new password okay so now we are at the end of the training so let's talk about two quiz questions uh, which of the following are threats to application security okay application security um, so the answer here is the injection attack and also the x x XSS, the uh, the cross script, it's cross site scripting. Okay, um, so these are actually the uh, uh, a huge track for threats for today, in terms of uh, application security. Um, so um, which of the the second question is that which of the following are device security risk, right? So the answer is, oh sorry, the answer are um, servers with uh, vulnerabilities okay device yeah remember device um, B users uses weak password which we mentioned before um, and also okay again number three is not the answer because this is uh, this is data transmission we're talking about device okay uh, user identity not uh, authenticated so this is this is also another uh, answer so answer is a B and D okay all right so the summary of this uh, th th the slides uh, we spoke about the current situation of information security threats threats to network security okay we spoke about uh, what is uh, security threat network threats uh, application and also we talk about um, the data transmission and also the uh, device security okay and uh, I thank you guys for listening to this chapter.